So I saw this article and it is a bit of an opinion piece and it was so fascinating because I pretty much agreed with it and I know a lot of Xbox fans think that you know I'm just a hater or whatever um, or that this this article is just hating on Xbox for whatever the the reason may be. Uh, it does, it's not the case. I mean, if you just take the the blinders off, right, uh, which I think is 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 keenly important with this kind of stuff, um, you would see that you know at the end of the day that this article is is 100 right yes it's an opinion piece but the article is called phil spencer long cast as xbox savior may be remembered as the man who killed it um hit points now that all his big bets have failed spencer is turning to corrective measures so this is um very very interesting i'm going to link this please please check it out whether you're an xbox fan or whatever um this is a lot having to do with what phil has said uh recently and also just over the years so you know again um this is interesting so phil spencer says without new customers everybody else's customer is your success state you can't succeed unless you draw on customers from publishers and other platforms and because you're not finding new customers with games that you're building everybody's kind of fighting over the same size pie when you have an industry that is projected to be smaller next year in terms of players and dollars, you get a lot of publicly traded companies that are in the industry that you have to show their investors growth. Because why else does somebody own a share of someone's stock if it's not going to grow? The side of the business that gets scrutinized is the cost side. But if you're not going to grow the revenue side, then the cost side becomes challenged. Now look, Spencer is right to a degree. But... If this were coming from a punter, a rack and rife a file developer at a random game studio or a modestly successful newsletter, idiot, it would be a fair comment. But Phil, I'm sorry to point this out, but you're the head of Xbox. I'm not sure you get to pin all of this on macroeconomics, this and that. You know, you've had, I think, a fair say, a degree of agency in all of this. Indeed, there are maybe a half dozen people with the power to actually change the shape of the game industry. And for the last 10 years, you have been one of them. I do not see a point in dwelling on how we got here because I think it's quite obvious to us all what's gone wrong. All of Spencer's big bets, the pivot to subscriptions, the variable hardware skews, the spending spree of studio acquisitions uh, were contingent on Xbox not just being uh, to borrow the Xbox tagline, the best place to play, but the best place to play the best games. If there's one lesson we can take from Spencer era, it's that you can enact all the disruptive change you like, but you cannot disprove the industry's oldest truth great games sell consoles a hundred billion dollars later xbox still doesn't have them if anything i would argue its first party output has got worse since the shopping spree has begun and its struggle are as such no surprise spencer spends part of his interview amusing uh, about dedicated xbox handheld which i'm sure seems like a no-brainer in a world where steam deck exists but i imagine it would be an alarming prospect for a development community that is slowly going into the fact that making games for xbox is too much of a difficult thing with few rewards to offer according to game industry business chris Dring. Uh, with Tales from GDC, the publisher's questioning the future support of the platform uh, is much of a risk already. A dominant subscription service cannibalizing game sales with Game Pass, the need to ensure parity across Xbox Series X and S, further increasing sky-high development costs, and offers such as small audience in return. Now you want a handheld version as well. You know, good luck with that. So basically, Phil Spencer bet heavily on the double skew, the Series S and the Series X. Both combined have sold around 22 to 24 million units. Uh, the, that's the least amount of sales of any Xbox in history. I mean, obviously, it'll at some point outsell the original Xbox, which I think did 25 million or something. But, you know, if, if it rises development costs to do an extra skew for the Series S, uh, wouldn't you have to, I mean, I, I, I doubt that, that it would be this gen, but you would have another console to, to kind of develop for w with this handheld. So I, I don't know. But anyway, um, it, it, it's very interesting. Now that all of his big bets has failed, Spencer is turning to corrective measures. Short-term fixes that might juice the numbers in the next couple of P&Ls, but seem destined to further weaken the Xbox ecosystem down the line. Bring the likes of Epic Game Store uh, to Xbox consoles with confused value proposition. Give users more ways to give money to people that aren't Microsoft and do nothing to transform Xbox's future. I mentioned this myself. How does having a Steam store or Epic Game Store on an Xbox console help Microsoft in the slightest? Right? 
they're not going to get any money from third-party games sold on those stores on Xbox. Um, you know, Spencer thinks if that's going to move the meat needle in any meaningful way, then he has some magic beans to sell him. And if he thinks that this is a two-way street, the first step on a journey that ends with Game Pass on PS5, Switch, and Steam, then he has truly lost a plot. Uh, taking former exclusives to rival platforms is yet more short-term thinking. Sure, it may pump the numbers a bit, but each new port is one less reason for a potential new customer to buy an Xbox and one more reason for Xbox owners to switch sides and abandon the platform for good. Once again, I cannot see a way in which Xbox, uh, in which this ends with Xbox as we know it today getting stronger. Let's assume charitably that Sea of Thieves sells 5 million copies at $40 a pop when it launches on PS5 in April. Let us even more charitably pretend that means $200 million in revenue for Microsoft, ignoring the distribution and marketing, Sony's platform cut, and the cost of making the port in the first place. Last quarter, $200 million would have increased Microsoft's revenue by only 0.3%. That is merely a rounding error for a company of Microsoft's size, and where the health in its gaming division is concerned, it's little more than a sticking plaster. To be clear... He feels bad for Spencer, as I do. He seems like a decent guy. I think he's come into this with the best intentions and in a parallel uniform verse where every horse he back romped home, he would be credited with transforming and perhaps even saving the game industry in another where instead of spending $70 billion on Activision Blizzard, he spent it on 230-odd games with the same budget as Spider-Man 2. Perhaps Xbox is flying, but in our world, he spent the last 10 years and gargantuan amounts of money taking Xbox from third place to third place, and that is not the market's fault. If the writing is on the wall for the Xbox as a whole, then it certainly could be for him. And now that's the part that I'm going to talk about for a second. So Xbox, as you guys know, um, Xbox has, you know, he took over as head of Xbox 10 years ago, and exactly 10 years ago. And he's, he was tasked with saving Xbox, which is a console, right? Any boob could have went in and said, okay, give me $100 billion and bought a bunch of publishers, the biggest games in the industry, Minecraft, Call of Duty, Overwatch, all these World of Warcraft, and went multi-platform and made some profit, right? That wasn't his job. That wasn't what he was tasked with. That wasn't what, what he was asked to do. He was supposed to save Xbox, right? What has he delivered in 10 years as head of Xbox in terms of games, in terms of anything? He's, all he's done is limited the potential of the console. Look, Xbox, and I hate to harp on this, Xbox 360, right, used to get the best multi-platform versions of games. Why? Because they had a lot of consoles sold. When you're not selling consoles, when you're constantly telling people not to buy your console, you're getting the worst versions of, con of, of these games, like, you know, to me, I do not understand that. Like, how is that okay with people? People are just okay with him going, okay, well, you know, games will survive. You know, we're committed to the gaming industry. Yes, they're committed with, with their third-party plans, right? Like, he keeps talking about business now. And people just think that because they mentioned they're going to make another Xbox, that that automatically means that they will. Like, until that is out, and, then, like, listen, Sega made a, another console. They made a Dreamcast, and then they stopped support of it, right? Like, I could definitely see Microsoft just, like, at some point saying, nope, we're not going to make, you know, we're not going to support this anymore. We're just going to go third party. People do not understand how quickly that can happen. I don't know. Like, what has he done in 10 years? Maybe clue me in. I would love to know. Sound off down below. This is, it's been utterly ridiculous that he hasn't, you know, who could do that poor, piss poor of a job over 10 years and still have a job? Like, that's, I think, a big question that I have. Uh, anyway, let me know. Rack him up. Crap Gamer out.